Hi, this is Raj Janipali from Zaloni, Director of Professional Services. Last series of Zip Data Warehouse, we talked about how do you modernize your data lake architecture from a traditional enterprise database architecture. In this video, I'm going to talk about three key components and how you design these components. First, we'll look into Hydrator. How do you manage your ingestion from the various sources into a data lake architecture? Two, we'll look into the design of the transformer. How do you look at the next generation ETL in data lake? Three, we'll look into the provisioner. How do you extract data from your data lake to your downstream consumers? Okay, so now let's look into what is required for designing the hydrator. The hydrator is the component that brings data from various sources into the data lake. First, you need to define a connection manager that manages your source types, credentials, and your owner. Second, you need a data feed configuration. For each of those sources, what are the feed names, what are the types, the mode, is it incremental, full, CDC? What's the security implications? Are there any PII fields? So that goes into the data feed configuration. Step three, you need to design reusable scripts or workflow that are built on the core components of Hadoop, which are Hadoop APIs, Scoop, Flume, and Kafka. But they are parameter driven so that you can reuse them. Four is the operational collection and stats, which include what is running the ingestion, who is running it, and when did it run it? What are the failures, if any, and how do you notify them? And how do you report to see trends and performance? Okay, now let's look at the transformer component, which takes the data that's in the raw format, cleans it, standardizes it, and enriches it so that it's ready for broader consumption. What does it take to design that? First, you need to have an application development platform that's built on core Hadoop, core Hadoop programs, Spark, Pig, Hive, and MapReduce. It must be abstracted and reusable so that it's broadly consumed by many developers. Two, it should have business rules integration. Let's take an example of an insurance company trying to define policies. Now, the policies require multiple rules the platform should integrate with rules given by business so that it doesn't require an IT change every time a rule changes. Three, it must have a workflow scheduling and management platform that tracks what workflow needs to be run at what frequency and what are the dependencies for the workflow and the logging. Four, it must have operational stats that it collects and reports which includes who ran the workflow, what and when, what are the failures, how do you notify in case there is an SLA miss, and then also the reporting. The provisioner component extracts the data from the data lake to the various consumers. So let's look at what's required to build that. First, you need a destination connection manager. Where is the data going? What type of destination type it is? The location, what are the credentials? Two, what is its metadata for the provisioning? That it should include, is it an RDBMS destination, file system, or is it streaming? What's the mode of request? Is it a full push or a incremental? Does it have filters that we need before we provision it out? What's the frequency, daily, hourly, or minutes? Three, we need to build the reusable scripts and components that can be on HDFS APIs, Scoop, Kafka, etc. Make sure it's parameter driven so that it's reusable. Four, operational stats. Collect who, what, when requested the provisioning and what happened. 
failures and notifications in case it happens and finally reporting okay so to summarize we looked at three key components of the modern data lake architecture today we looked at how do you hydrate the data lake from various sources how do you transform the data lake from the raw zone to end red zone and then how do you provision data from the data lake to your consumers thank you